Good afternoon. My name is Ian Lee, and uh, today I'm here to talk about the open source work that we do at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory. Uh, myself, I do a number of different things at the lab, but uh, one of those things is to help evangelize the open source work that we're doing here. And we've been doing this for, for quite a while now. We've been doing open source at the laboratory for, depending on how you want to count it, but somewhere between, uh, somewhere around 20 years. And this has been an ongoing effort. I merely stepped in a few years ago to try and pull some of it together and build a greater community around it. But there's been a lot of great work been done over a number of years by many, many different people. So all the way up through our management chain, we have support and encouragement for open source software. Uh, a couple of years ago, Bruce Hendrickson, the associate director for uh, computing, has publicly stated that our large, selection, uh, our large collection of software is one of the lab's greatest assets. And so we've really tried to make an effort to publicize that and make that catalog and that collection known to the public and also to figure out how folks outside of the laboratory are using it and how folks inside the laboratory can either make use of what we have open sourced or contribute their own project to open source. And what you can see is we've actually seen a, a pretty tremendous growth in time over the last four years or so in particular since I've, I've been helping uh, facilitate some of this work. But we've seen um, the growth around our software portal, which I'll get into showing some details of, uh, really taking off. We've got now around 600 uh, open source projects out on primarily on github.com, the software repository hosting platform. And some of the projects that we have, because the lab's history is, is so long, actually predate github.com and in fact predate Git in some cases. So we have open source projects that we have available today that actually were initially started back as early as 1994 is the oldest project that we have available right now. And so that started as one version control system, was moved forward to a newer system, uh, and has been migrated forward to finally land today on GitHub. And in the future, maybe it'll be some other platform. Um, but it's really helped kind of pull together a community sense of our projects. And one of the other things that's happened over time, you can see kind of denoted by the blue and green lines here, is a lot of our projects are starting earlier and earlier to get on GitHub. They're not staying as internal projects for very long. They're actually moving externally and being developed as open source projects. Um, much earlier on in their lifespans. Some of them, in fact, are actually developed from day one with code on, uh, out in the open and made available to the public. So if you look at across our organizations, we're, we're one laboratory, but we have uh, something like 10 different organizations of code, uh, on GitHub organizations worth of code that we maintain. So the biggest organization is the LNL organization. That sort of makes sense. But we also have a large presence in the CDAT uh, organization, as well as SPAC, OpenZFS, the Earth Science Grid Federation, ESGF, and a couple of other projects that have actually spun out to their own communities. And uh, here you can actually see a graph of the internal versus external contributors to a variety of our projects. And so you can see that some of them, like many of the ones in our LNL organization, are started here or really focused around LNL's needs. And so we have a lot of LNL contributors to them. But we also have other projects like SPAC and OpenZFS where we have large external bodies of contributors that come in and make that code better and then go off and use it on their own. We get a lot of activity to our open source projects. So we have about six to 700 uh, commits, changes to a, to a, across all our projects in any given day, uh, sorry, in every, any given week. And that pretty much holds steady throughout the entire year. You can see there's a little bit of a slump at the, at the end of the year around the holidays, but then it picks right back up in January. And even this year, throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, you can see that we continued to have a fairly strong open source presence and a lot of activity on our open source projects. We've started this year, uh, in particular, exploring the data, exploring what are our contributions to open source and how do our projects interact with other projects that are open source, both LNL projects and external projects. And so we've got this new visualization. This is actually a dynamic uh, page you can go click around in in our, in our website with the link at the bottom there. And you can actually explore for our LNL open source projects, how they interact with other projects across the 
the software development world. And so here you can see that the blue dots, mostly at the, the centers of these clusters, are the LNL projects. And the green dots around them are the projects that are external to LNL, so ones that LNL doesn't directly own or maintain. And you can see there's some, some pretty decent clustering around some of our projects. And you can also see that many of our projects are very interconnected with other projects. And so this allows a way for our staff to figure out what communities are we plugged into. If you dig into this, you'll find that we have pretty strong connections into the Python world, uh, into some uh, C and Fortran communities, as well as into some other communities as well. As you start digging into some of the projects that we have and uh, what's actually being developed, you can see that we have a number of repositories that have quite, quite taken off over the years. So in particular, we have, you know, our top 10 projects have cumulatively uh, somewhere on the order of 10,000 stars on GitHub, which is a, a unit of sort of how popular, sort of a thumbs up metric for our projects. And so the two biggest at the moment are ZFS and SPAC, but then also we have uh, MFEM, ROSE, ZFP, uh, PDISH, some of our other eight high performance computing tools and math libraries are also making up this, this top 10 list. And several other projects are you know, not that far behind in terms of how big and how diverse the communities are. These projects go on to be quite renowned. So we have uh, an award in computing called the R&D 100 award. Uh, last year in 2019, two of our open source projects, SPAC and SCR, both were winners of that award. And uh, you know, this has brought a, a quite a bit of attention and recognition to these projects. As, as the year has gone on. If you're an LNL person or if you're outside of the laboratory, uh, you might want to figure out how do, I, how do I find out about what's going on? And we have a couple of different ways for that. Externally, primarily, we have the LNL open source Twitter account where we post about the new projects we have, new releases, when something's in the news. Um, and uh, that's a pretty active, active feed and active way of getting information about our open source projects, as well as other events that the laboratory might be participating in. We also, primarily for our internal uh, developers that are working on open source projects, we have a Slack workspace that you can join. Uh, if you're working with some external collaborators, it's possible we can uh, get them in as well. So you can, you can contact some of the admins and we can work on getting that collaboration set up. And this has become a, a resource for doing communication real time with other open source developers at the laboratory and, and outside the laboratory. If you're not as interested in the real time collaboration of uh, Twitter or Slack, then we also have some static websites that are available with documentation about how to work through our processes. We have two primarily, one for our external community, software.lnl.gov, and one internally for our, our LNL developers here locally. That's the dev.lnl.gov site. And both of these sites serve slightly different needs. So one is about releasing content, uh, making communities available to the outside world, and sharing the resources and sharing the software that we've released, and really trying to put the polish on them. So all the, the visualizations that I showed before come off that software.lnl.gov site. The dev.lnl.gov site, on the other hand, is more inwardly focused. So it's a collection of resources, guides, uh, frequently asked questions for how to do development at the laboratory, how to work with open source projects, uh, and how to get your software released. So in particular, over the last few years, we've had some pretty new effort made and some new uh, guidance put out on how to actually go about releasing our software and how to contribute to external software repositories. So in particular, if you dive into the guidance, what you'll find is the, the former process from a few years ago, some of you might remember, was a little cumbersome uh, to release. Now we have an all online process that will guide you through releasing your project. So if you're a, a new software developer or, or a software developer working on a new project, you can come to the eSoftware website, you can submit your project, give the information about that project, uh, provide the links to the source code, and get that out and released to the community, where then you can actually now continue working on that project out in the open and collaborating and building a community around it. Conversely, you might find that you're a developer looking to contribute to someone else's open source project. 
and that process as well has been streamlined and, and simplified. And so now it's usually only a few days between announcing, hey, I'd like to work on this open source project and contribute some, some fixes back to it or some documentation back to it and being able to, to go forward with the, the approval process. And so what I want to sort of end on here is the idea that you know, all of this content that we make available, our software.lnl.gov site, our dev.lnl.gov site, both of these are meant to be resources for people to come and contribute to. So if you're a developer, either inside the laboratory or outside the laboratory, and you come across one of our pages and you find that there's something missing or confusing, I really want to encourage you to uh, leave a pull request or open an issue and let's, let's try and make that a little better. And this has been one of the things that I want to leave you to with today. One of the things that really drew me to open source is this idea that I could make small contributions to make someone else's life a lot better. And that's what I would like to challenge you to, is if you're a developer, you're someone just even coming and using, you're, you have no development background at all, but you're using our documentation or using our visualizations, you notice there's a problem, leave that as, a, as an issue or a pull request to help make things a little bit better for those that will come behind you. Thank you.